Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Dizzy's Club Coca-Cola. How's everyone doing? All right. On behalf of Jazz Lincoln Center, we welcome everyone to Dizzy's Club Coca-Cola. We're about to hear some wonderful music by some extraordinary artists, so I'm not going to keep you any longer. Let's give a Dizzy's Club Coca-Cola welcome to Hugh Masakela and Larry Wills. Thank you for receiving us with so much joy and generosity, folks. And uh, we're just so happy to be here in New York, New York, although you got the better view. <laughs> Larry Willis.
Larry Willis. Larry Willis and I, it's proper English, buddy. Larry Willis and I had the misfortune of meeting in September of 1960 at Manhattan School of Music. And uh, it was the greatest time to be a young musician in this town because there was just music everywhere. For a dollar, you could sit at the Apollo Theater all day and um, enjoy a gospel review four times, about seven times on the weekend, <laughs> for 12 hours of um, a, a jazz variety spectacular with Cannonball and Nancy Wilson and Mungo Santa Maria and just all that, or you could see like the James Brown review or the Ray Charles review or the Motown review, I mean, it was just, and then at night, some evenings, and we were students then, so we were poor. <laughs> we were not poor. We were poor. <laughs> In fact, we was poor. Oh, we was poor. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, you know, it, uh, the, the subway cost a dime. And sometimes you'd have to borrow a dime. Yeah. Or walk, or walk a long way. We really, we could really, but we used to save our money for the clubs. Because you could start at 8 o'clock at a half note, and Coltrane would be playing there. To Alvin Jones and McCoy Tyner, Reggie Workman. And uh, then you'd go up across, you know, and get to the village gate, and there was like Horace Silva Quintet or Les McCann. Opposite Carmen McRae or Sarah Vaughan. And then you'd go across town to St. Mark's Place at the Jazz Gallery, and there'd be Dizzy Gillespie, uh, opposite Monk. And um, um, five buildings down on the corner of Third Avenue and St. Mark's Place was the five spot where Charlie Mingus was always holding forth, as they said, with his orchestra. And Max Roach and his quintet would be there. Then if you come around back again to the west side, there'd be lines around the village vanguard, everybody waiting for miles to show up or uh, to come and see what he was wearing. <laughs> but when he, when he went onto the microphone with his group and played, shit. Yeah. And you come uptown, you know, you come to, uh, on 48th Street, there was Basin Street East, where like Duke Ellington would be there, opposite Ella Fitzgerald, around the corner at Birdland, 52nd Street and 7th Avenue. There'd be the Count Basie Orchestra, opposite Dinah Washington, etc., etc., etc. And it changed, it went around, uh, uh, there'd be the Dizzy Gillespie, there'd be a... Uh, uh, cannonball, there'd be uh, the Slide Hampton Orchestra, there'd be 
Ah, Jesus, we're like uh, little piggies in dirty mud. <laughs> and we were scholars of music. We just like loved everything and, and not just uh, particular. And uh, there was some kind of other music that was emerging that was kind of hard to understand. They called it out there, but uh, we never really got to that. But we had a great um, um, teacher by the name of John Mehigan. John Mehigan was um, a professor of uh, um, jazz at um, Juilliard School of Music and at Columbia University. And um, um, uh, he had come to South Africa in 1958 and heard about some of uh, us musicians there. And he came looking for us and we did a couple of LPs. Anybody remember what an LP is? <laughs> My daughter used to say, what is that, Dad? Um, um, yeah, we did a couple of LPs uh, with him. And then, of course, he was deported for hanging out with the natives too much. But he gave us free um, sort of uh, quick theory, uh, improvis improvisational like uh, lessons for free. But uh, all the white students who came forth, he charged them 15 pounds a lesson. And some of them were my friends, you know, like Maurice Goldberg, and I introduced him to some of these people. I said, John, how can you do this, man? And some of these people are my friends. And he said, you know what, Huey? This is my kind of apartheid. <laughs> When he came back to the States, he wrote about us. And so when I met Larry, actually, Larry at the time was an opera singer. Because, you know, Manhattan School of Music was a classical school. And there was this uh, uh, a trombone player of Jamaican origin who lived in the Bronx. He had a piano at his home. And uh, he lived with his widow, our father, Ashley Fennell. He said, man, this young piano player you know, uh, um, Ashley really liked it to sound like a, a jazz musician, right? Yeah. But um, he played trombone in the symphony orchestra. But he really couldn't, he, he wasn't too good on this side, you know, where, where we, you know, he really couldn't play this music too well. But those were the days of jamming, and anybody who had a piano was a hero. And we'd go to their home just to play, and we'd suffer through Ashley's solos. But he had the piano. <laughs> and his father also cooked a hell of a rice and beans and sort of like fish dishes. And like when you're a poor student, you don't know where your next meal is coming from. So we used to get the jam and also the food, you know, that was a double thing. But um, I introduced uh, Larry Willis to John Mehigan and he made uh, a monster out of Larry. <laughs> and uh, uh, John really set on us to uh, learn all kinds of music, especially music by composers like Dick Ellington and uh, the Gershwins, you know, and uh, um, Hoagy Carmichael's and uh, Ira, uh, oh, I already mentioned his brother. Um, um, Cole Porter. I always forget Cole Porter, right? Yeah. Why? Cole Porter, but there were a whole lot of composers and they wrote a lot of uh, Broadway musicals, but all, we call these the standards. And um, when you were at the jam session, they'd call any of those songs and if you didn't know it, you had to know it, you had to know all the chords, otherwise you wouldn't you know, play and like, um, if they didn't want you to play, they always called those the difficult songs, the ones with the difficult uh, changes, right? So John like made us learn all of those and um, we learned all kinds of music, and uh, uh, we've known each other, damn, 54 years now. And in that... <laughs> I remember when we, 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 we... Larry used to, like, practice his signature in case he got known and had to sign an autograph. <laughs> And I said, what you doing? He said, I'm practicing my autograph, man. <laughs> and I said, okay, let me try mine too. But his is really as pretty as he plays, you know. 
Mine is sort of like there's a lot of wrong notes up in places. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, Larry tried to get rid of me. And I tried to get rid of him for many years, but we just couldn't do it. So um, here we are. We've made a few uh, records, but um, uh, in the front there, they've got like a record that we did like two years ago, almost three years ago now. It's not a record, it's four CDs in a box set. And uh, it's very affordable, so don't be shy. <laughs> so tonight we're going to just give you a cross-section of what we've been through musically. And it goes all over the place because the one bad thing that uh, John Mehegan taught Larry was to love beautiful songs. So sometimes he calls me like at three in the morning, you know, and he goes, hey, bro. I said, man, Larry, it's three in the morning. What do you want? He said, you got to hear this song, man. Over the phone, you know, I'm in Johannesburg. It's in Baltimore. And uh, um, I've learned so many songs um, uh, from, from Larry because of that. And we'd like just to um, try a few of the ones that we really love. So one morning he calls me and he says, man, I got a song here by the Stylistics. I said, but that's a doo-wop group, man. I mean, you know, we ain't going to be playing that. He said, yeah, but you got to hear this song, man. And when he taught it to me, I said, Shit, yeah, we have to do this one. You make me feel brand new. You know, a lot of, a lot of babies were born behind this song. Yeah.
this.
Fesswala. <laughs> now, in fact, before Fesswala, let's just do a little Duke Ellington here. Yeah. Um, this is a, a song that the Duke of Ellington wrote for Mahalia Jackson. I think it was back in the late 50s. It yeah. was a whole like spiritual work. Yeah. It was called uh, Beige. Black, brown, and beige. And in there, uh, he wrote a song for her called Come Sunday. And uh, boy, did she sing the hell out of it.
Fats Waller. <laughs> Was a very roly poly.